Okay, on this question we have a bus that stops at certain points in its journey to let passengers get on or off the bus and we're given the distance time graph for part of this uh, bus journey and it's labeled to letters A to G. So the first question is asking us to give the letters of the sections where the bus is stationary. Now just as a reminder for the distance time graphs, as you can see here, this is how they look like for four different cases. So the first one, if we have a uniform motion, that means constant speed, we have a straight diagonal line. The reason it's diagonal is because for the same amount of time, it's covering the same amount of distance. Right? That's why it, it has constant speed. Then stationary, it looks like that. Why it looks like that? Because for any moment of time, the object is at the same distance from the start. So if there's no change in the distance from the start, that means it's always at the same distance from the from the start, which is that means it stopped. Then deceleration, we see that it's a curve leaning inwards. This is because every if you compare two equal uh, time periods, the amount of distance that is covered is getting less and less and less. So you see during the first period it has covered that distance, then it's a bit less, and then it's a bit less. So every time it's doing less distance. And similarly, acceleration is a curve with increasing gradient, increasing steepness, because for equal amount of times, you can see that initially it has covered that, but then for the same amount of time it has covered even more. So now we're looking to find out at which letters they represent sections where the bus is stationary. So stationary is this case over here. Therefore, any horizontal lines will represent sections where the bus is stationary. Therefore, we have B, we have D, and we have F. So B, D. Next one, we need to calculate the speed of the bus during section C. Now, um, this is a constant speed. As you can see, diagonal line going up, it's a constant speed. So how do we find the speed? Which formula are we using for constant speed? That would be distance over time. So we can write our formula, distance over time. Or instead of V, which is for velocity, you can write S equals distance over time. In that case, it wouldn't make any difference because we're assuming the bus is moving on a straight line. Therefore, um, these things are kind of the same. All right now, we're looking at section C. What is the distance that was covered in section C? It's a distance time graph. Therefore, we can get values directly from the graph. So at C, at this point, we can see that the distance that was at it was this one over here. Then we can see that every division is 0 0.2. Therefore, that was 1.8. And then the final distance, it was 4.4. Yeah, so the distance covered is a distance between 1.8 and 4.4. Now, what is the equivalent time taken for that? If we look at the time axis, we have five to seven. So, two minutes then. All right, so going back to this, what is the distance? It is 4.4 minus 1.8, as we, as we saw from the graph, the distance between these two points, all right, divided by two. That will give me 2.6 over 2. Now, 2.6, it's measured in kilometers. And the time is measured in minutes. So, if I'm going to use kilometers and minutes for my units, therefore, this calculation will give me um, 1.3 kilometers per minute. But this question is specifying that it needs to have an answer in meters per second. 
Therefore, we need to we need to convert kilometers into meters. And how do I do that? Is by multiplying by 1,000 because one kilometer has 1,000 meters. And the time instead of, instead of minutes, we need to calculate these in seconds. Therefore, we have to convert minutes to seconds. How do I do that? Times 60. So in that case, I have 2,600 divided 120. So that will be 21.7 meters per second. And you can round it up to 22 meters per second. Explain what the graph shows about the speed of the bus in section E compared to the speed of section A. Now we need to compare how does E, that part, is different to A. Now it's obvious that the part section A is more steep than section E. And what does this mean? Let's go back to here. If I have car A that has this graph and then I have car B that has this one. So what does this tell us? At the specific time, which one has covered more distance? So B has covered that distance. A has covered that distance. So you can see that A has covered more distance on the same time. Therefore, it shows that it's moving faster. And the other way around. B, because it has a less steep, because the line is less steep, that means it's traveling at a lower speed. Also, remember that the gradient or a distance time graph represents the speed. So, straight away, we can say more gradient, more speed, less gradient, less speed. So, what do we say for that one? We can say that at section A, speed is greater. All right? Why is greater? Because the gradient is steeper. And the next part. There's another bus that covers a distance of 7 kilometers at a time of 14 minutes. And we need to um, complete the velocity time graph to show the motion of this bus. Now a quick reminder about the velocity time graphs. So these are now velocity time graphs. So if it's a uniform motion, straight horizontal line because at any given point the velocity is always the same. Then if it's stationary, that means velocity is zero. Therefore, it will be like that. If it's deceleration, that means uh, the velocity is decreasing. It's getting less and less and less. That's why it's a line, straight line with negative gradient. And if it's acceleration, the other way around, it means that the velocity is increasing on a constant rate. So therefore, it will be a straight diagonal line with positive uh, gradient. Therefore, if it's moving at constant velocity, that means we're looking at we're looking at this kind of graph. We're looking at the horizontal straight line. Now we need to define where this line will start, at which value of velocity this will start. So I think to find that we can just quickly do a very very quick velocity calculation. So as we did before, velocity is distance over time. Um, the total distance is five kilometers, sorry, seven kilometers. The total time is 14 minutes. So if you do that, it's 0 0.5 kilometer per minute. Therefore, at 0 0.5, I'm going to draw a horizontal line until it reaches the 14 minutes, which is pretty much the end. So, that's it.